Dear friends, we are in Dhammapada, stanza number 209. Ayoge yunja matanang yogas mincha ayojayang. Attang hitta piyagahi pihatanu yogi nam. Brief meaning of this stanza is applying oneself to that which should be avoided. Not applying oneself to that which should be pursued. And giving up the quest, one who goes after pleasure envies those who exert themselves. This is the brief meaning of this stanza. In this, this stanza is giving us a wonderful lesson for our life and our practice. Ayogya. Ayogya means which you're not supposed to apply. As Buddhist practitioner, we have a goal to achieve, to accomplish. We are working to accomplish our goal. So, to achieve that goal, we should apply the proper method. If you are not able to apply the proper method, then you may not able to accomplish your goal. It's the nature, it's the reality. Once the Buddha said a wonderful simile. What is that simile? That simile is if you have a cow who is ready to give milk, holding that cow's horn, asking milk from that cow, can you get milk from the horn? Touching the horn, oh, please give me milk. Please give me milk. Can you get any milk? No, there is no way to get milk. Feeding well to that cow, treating well to the cow, when you are touching the breast, you can get milk right away, even though you are not asking from the cow, she will give you milk because you are touching the place where you should touch. The Buddha used this simile to emphasize the path. If you are on the path, practicing correctly and following the guidance correctly, developing all the qualities that you should achieve gradually, then definitely you can achieve the goal. You can achieve, accomplish the main object that you have in your mind, main purposes of our practice, you can accomplish. If you are not on the path, doing something else on behalf of the path, applying the different things, thinking of different goals, then never achieve your goal. You can't achieve the goal. So, in here, the Buddha mentioning ayogya yunjamatthana, applying oneself to that which should be avoided. There are something that you're not supposed to apply, you should avoid it, but you are applying that things for your practice, for your day-to-day -day life. And not applying oneself that which you should be pursued. There are something that you should apply. 
But if you're not applying that you should pursue it, then how you can gain? You gain nothing. And giving up the quest, one who goes after pleasure envies those who exert themselves. If you have that kind of lifestyle, you are enjoying with pleasure. We practice the teachings of the Buddha. We are applying the teachings of the Buddha to realize the reality. To realize the reality. But engaging with sensual pleasure, no one can realize the reality. This is very important. This is very important. Dear friends, we all are in conventional truth. Conventionally, all the things that you can see, that you can hear, that you can taste, are correct, right. But absolute truth is different than the conventional truth. According to the absolute truth, uh, nothing is existing in this world. This is the reality. But the things that you take as object through your eyes, we think, oh, there are things. The things that you hear through your ears, you, you're ready to think, but well, there is a sound. Even the my voices you taking as a sound. You think, oh, this sound coming from the bante. You have that thoughts. But reality is different. What is sound? Is there is something reality? No. Sound is a process. It is a result of combination few things. So in this manner, the objects that you are taking from the faculties and bases are belongs to conventional truth, not absolute truth. Same as uh, in our practice, we have to be in this truth. If you are not in this truth, then you are uh, twisting with uh, conventional truth and absolute truth, uh, then you are not able to practice correctly to achieve, to accomplish the goal, the final goal. Around the world, we can see Buddhist practitioner. Most Buddhist practitioners are not realized they are practice. As you know, our practice is Noble Eight Pole Path. Noble Eight Pole Path is the path. According to Mahasatipatthana Sutta, Ekayano Ayan Maggo. This is the one and only path. There is no any other shortcut. There is no any other path, different path. Ekayano ayam maggo satanang visuddhya. This is the one and only path for our own liberation. So what is that? That is not something that is only thing, noble eight pole path. Noble eight pole path, we can divide it into three baskets, which we call sila samadhi pratyam. Sila means Morale, Samadhi means concentration, Panya means wisdom. All these are the achievements that we can achieve applying the Noble Eight Pole Path, the method. So there are activities, there are three activities regarding all these achievements. What are those? Practicing generosity observing precepts and practicing meditation. These are the activities that we should apply our day-to-day -day life. So meditation is not just only path, only activity. No, it is one, one of them. Then you have to observe precepts and practice. You have to develop your morale, discipline, 
The second thing, and practice generosity. Without applying these two other things, just apply in meditation, you can get only part of the path, part of the results, part of the goal, not the whole results, not the main accomplishment. Dear friends, in this world, some of them already misunderstood the practice, this practice. We have to practice together. All these activities are activities we should apply together. We have to meditate with discipline, morale, sealer. And same time, we have to develop our generousness. So without developing this generousness, it is not easy to develop your meditation. You can, you should read life stories of the Buddha, how the Buddha practice, how the Bodhisattva practice. As you know, in, during the Deepankara Buddha's time, our Gautama Sakyamuni Buddha was practicing as a Bodhisattva, name was Sumedha Tapasa. Ascetic Sumedha was going on Samya and he met some people who were preparing a path for the Buddha. And then he was questioning what you are doing and then they said, they reply, we are preparing the path for our village because Deepankara Buddha is coming to visit us. They are, they, Deepankara Buddha coming along with my other, uh, his other disciples to our village. We are preparing to welcome him. Then Sumedha, ascetic Sumedha was very happy and he was asking how I can join with you. Oh, then yes, it, is, it is not a big deal. We are cleaning the path. If you like, you can take one, pa when, when one part of the path to clean and clear. So you can join with us. Then he decided to get a difficult area, very difficult area. Unfortunately, time is passing. He was not able to accomplish the wishes that he had, he made, he promised to that people. Still, he was cleaning the path. Then he said, okay, what to do? Still, I have little area to finish. But Buddha is here now. The Deepankara Buddha and the disciples are here now. So what I should do now? I, I can't do nothing. So then what he said, he lying on and then he invited to the Buddha and the monks, Venerable Sir, I was not able to finish this area. So please go through my body because muddy water, mud is here. You don't supposed to get any. My body would be the bridge for you Please go through my body. This is the way how Bodhisattva practice. If he made a promise, he was sacrificed. He was ready to sacrifice his life to finish that promise. So this is the way how he practice generosity. So dear friends, Practicing generosity means not just giving money. Your time, your strength, your energy, all these things, and your knowledge, you can share with others. Benefits for them, benefits for others. So this is the way how you should practice the teachings of the Buddha. Not just meditation. Meditation is not enough. Some people, even they come to our meditation center to practice meditation, practice teachings, 
and they like to sit on meditation hall. Just sitting in the meditation hall, they don't want to involve any other activities. No, that is completely wrong. Same time, they have to do everything. As you know, when you are in a place, you have to take care of that place. You have to clean the place. You have to prepare the place. To, uh, you have to prepare your food. All these are there with you. So discipline and generous, gener to practice generosity, there are opportunity doing all these things. So practicing Buddhism means not just sitting in a meditation hall hours and hours. You should live in the society as a person who can help others, who can help yourself and as well as others. This kind of person should be you if you are a real practitioner. You can read the life stories of the Buddha. Not only the Buddha, even the other monks, even the present monks, you can read their life story. Then you can see how they are practicing. This is very important. So then you know what, what does it mean? Ayogi yunja mattanam. What you should do, you should do it. Instead of things that you should do, if you are not applying, the things that you should avoid, if you are applying that things to your practice, then what you can gain? You gain nothing. So therefore, being biased to one activities, then you are misguiding yourself. There are people who just practice generosity. They don't practice meditation. Then they also gain nothing. Who are just practicing meditation, they also not gain nothing. So therefore, this is very important. What should apply? We should know that. We should apply it. What we are not supposed to apply, we should know it and we should not apply it. This is very clear things to our life, our practice, particularly for our practice and other things. Dear friends, practicing Dhamma is not just belongs to the meditation hall or the temple or the monastery. When you are in, in the store to buy things, checking out, or searching things, even that time you should play, you should have the Dhamma practice there. It does not matter where you are in. It might be Costco, it might be Walmart, it might be in some other shopping places, it does not matter. You should live with your practice. You might be in wedding or party, it does not matter. You should practice Dhamma there. Sometimes perhaps you might have thoughts, oh, the time where you are in there, or that time you have to pay attention only for that things. When you are doing shopping, just pay attention to shopping. That is one thing, but you have to practice Dhamma there. When you are in party, wedding ceremony or whatever the ceremony is, it does not matter. You have to be mindful there. You are practicing generosity. You are observing precepts, don't forget. You are practicing meditation. You're not supposed to forget there any of these activities because this is your base. So going here and there, practicing and doing something else, these two things uh, doing one by one in time, you can't gain nothing. That's why today it is rare to see the results of practice, uh, practicing Dhamma because we are not practicing properly. If you are practicing properly in, in right way, 
the result should be with us all the time because nature of dhamma sandittiko akaliko timeless at the moment you can see the results when you are applying the method this is the nature of the dhamma this is not my word these are the explanation given by the buddha so ayogye yunya mattanam dhyapo you should apply oneself to that which should be avoided not apply in oneself to that uh, which should be pursued and giving up the quest one who goes after pleasure no one can avoid that you just enjoy with pleasures you are just stay with the sensual pleasure why you you can't gain nothing your spiritual development is not happening there because you are paying attention only for sensual pleasure as a lay person person who is practicing dhamma that's fine they can have their sensual pleasure with limitation with limitation because the precepts that you observe kame su micha chara kame su micha chara kame su samachara and micha chara these two words are very important to learn samachara mean you are doing it in right way that is acceptable if you are doing the wrong way sensual pleasures that is not acceptable as lay follower therefore you can enjoy through your basis ear nose tongue that's fine but you have you have to maintain the limits boundaries without maintaining boundaries you don't know you are wasting your time therefore what we should apply we should know that we have to know that and what what we should avoid we have to know that knowing the things that you should apply and avoid then you can have the clear path buddha gave us this stensa to guide three monks to actually two monks and a nun three of them are coming from same family the son first attain uh, the son of the family wanted to become a monk uh, listening to dhamma he was listening to dhamma he was associated in monks and he was very happy and then he wanted to become a monk so he tried to get permission from parents but they did not give permission for him but finally Uh, he decided himself to go to temple land he got ordination then his father also decided to oh, why i am not going there i want to go with him and i the father also left from the house and then he got ordination where his son was now father and uh, son was there together and then mother decided to oh, why i am not going i am also going to find a nunnery and then she also became a nun three of them were uh, three of them at, at uh, get into the uh, dispensation became a monk and nun but they were living very closely each other so all the time they were like to connect together they were company together they were discussing about their life and sharing and living as a mother and father and son they did not to pay attention to practice dhamma finally the message went to the buddha they became monk and nun but they are not living exactly maintaining their goal they are 
sharing their loving kindness thoughts as like a lay people so the buddha advised them you not supposed to live this kind of lifestyle because you are you ordain to get rid of this sansaric journey sansaric suffering what you are doing now you are paying attention for sensual pleasure just you are enjoying doing so so you not supposed to do this then finally they were not agree with the buddha they disturbed and they went to went back to their home life lay life again but why it happened because they did not pay attention to the goal why they became monk the goals were not clear for them that's why it happened to them therefore friends we how to keep our goals very clearly and we have to know the path what we should do what we avoid it what we should avoid it what we should apply these are very important for our practice so if you are on the path then you can accomplish the goal if you are not on the path then you are not able to accomplish the goal that your wishes not come to is like this there are path which is going to south and north east and west so you want to go to washington dc as you know washington dc located in the east so you should go to the roads highways toward east without turning to east if you are turning to west there is no way to meet to going to washington dc so in this manner following the guidance of the buddha we should keep our mind what is the direction what is the destination that you are willing to go this is a very important for us to keep in our mind with our practice practice in right way yes definitely we can achieve we can accomplish the goal i think that would be enough with this stanza keep in your mind about your practice and clean and clear your path then definitely we can achieve the goal we can accomplish our wishes so having that clean and clear path let us practice this dhamma for our liberation to establish our happiness to establish our inner peace uh, having that aspiration we can finish today dhamma talk let us use this opportunity to share merits with others first of all think about uh, departed relatives friends family members and pets who departed name of us by the power of this merits and metta thoughts may they all be well happy and peaceful may they be able to attain ultimate bliss of nibbana having that aspiration say sadhu 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 whoever is affected by covid 19 and any other sicknesses by the power of this merits and metta thoughts may they all be well happy and peaceful may they be able to get rid of their suffering and pain having that aspiration make blessings upon them saying sadhu 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 may you all be well happy and peaceful all your wishes come true by the power of this merits and metta thoughts may we all be able to attain ultimate bliss of nibbana having that aspiration say sadhu 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 by means of this meritorious deeds may i never join with the police may i join always with the wise until the time attain nibbana may the suffering be free from suffering may the fear struck be free from fear may the grieving be free from grief so too may all beings be from the highest realms of existence to the lowest may all be in reason in these realms with form and without form with perception and without perception be released from all suffering 
and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much.